Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving Cambridge IGCSE Biology Paper 2 Multiple Choice Question Paper, May June 2020, Paper 2 2. Guys, in this particular question paper, we are going to be solving from question number 21 to question number 40. Guys, this is a part 2 series of this particular video. So if you haven't watched the part 1 video and you want to watch it, I'll put all of these particular videos, 0610 Paper 2 2 videos, all of these videos in a playlist and you can watch it from there. So we'll start from question number 21. The substances listed are associated with aerobic respiration. Carbon dioxide, glucose, oxygen, water. Which substance are the product of aerobic respiration? We know that aerobic respiration uses glucose. And when the glucose reacts with oxygen, uh, it gives carbon dioxide and water. Plus it gives energy, which we use in our life processes so uh, carbon dioxide and water will be the product one and four so b will be the answer the formula of ch2oh represents a chemical produced during an aerobic respiration what is this chemical all right this chemical is an alcohol because there is a oh group with it so it's an alcohol what is filtered out of the blood in the glomerulus into the kidney both glucose and urea are both filtered out of the blood in the glomerulus in the kidney. However, later on, the glucose is reabsorbed back. The urea is not reabsorbed back. Question number 24. Which responses occur in the iris of the eye when a person walks from a brightly lit area to a dimly lit area? So in a, in a brightly lit area, our pupil must be smaller. So smaller pupil. In a dimly lit area, our pupil must be larger. So to make the pupil larger, certain necessary changes must occur. And they are the circular muscles must the circular muscles must um, all right, relax. Because when the circular muscles contract, the pupil becomes smaller. The, so the circular muscles must relax and relax and radial muscles must contract which will cause the pupil to become larger so if you're wondering what are the circular muscles in the pupil there are muscles that goes like this these are the circular and the ones that goes like this are the radial okay which glands are endocrine glands endocrine glands are those that release hormone directly into the blood so Adrenal releases hormone, adrenaline, directly into the blood. Pancreas releases insulin and glucagon directly into blood. Testis releases testosterone directly into the blood. So A will be the correct answer. Let's see why the other ones are wrong. Adrenal, ovaries, salivary. Salivary releases, uh, you know, all of the enzymes directly into the mouth, not into the blood. Ovaries, testes are correct, but sweat is wrong. Pancreas, salivary is wrong. Sweat is also wrong. Guys, question number 26. What are the effects of insulin and adrenaline on the concentration of blood glucose? So effect of insulin on the blood glucose concentration. Insulin is responsible for decreasing blood glucose concentration. Whereas the effect of adrenaline on the blood glucose concentration, adrenaline is adrenaline stimulates the liver to increase the blood glucose concentration. So B will be the answer. Guys, question number 27. A sexual reproduction can be used to produce crop. What might a disease be likely to what might a disease be likely to spread throughout the whole crop? All right. Crop plants are genetically different. No, a sexual reproduction produces genetically identical plants. Crop plants are genetically identical. Yes, that is the main reason why it can spread throughout the crop. Many offsprings are produced. All right. Uh, that doesn't Makes sense. Offsprings are produced quickly. That doesn't make sense either. All right. So 27B will be the answer, guys. Question number 28. In a comparison between the process of artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization, IVF, which statement applies to IVF only? Human egg cells are harvested from the ovary. Donated sperm cells are used to fertilize the egg cells. Endless, childless couples are given the opportunity to have child of their own. Fertilization occurs inside the body of the female. All right. In IVF, all right, fertilization occurs outside the body of the female. All right. 
in comparison between the process of artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization, which statement applies to IVF only. Childless couples are given the opportunity in both of the processes, in both artificial insemination and IVF. All right, donated sperm cells are used to fertilize the egg cells. This can be also be applicable in artificial insemination. So human egg cells are harvested from the ovary that is only done in IVF, in vitro fertilization. 28A. Guys, question number 29. The diagram shows half a flower. There is a description of each numbered parts. Okay, so we can see part number one. The stigma which receives the pollen from the insect. Okay, that is correct. All right. The anther which produces smooth and light pollen grains. Uh, okay, so that part is a uh, little bit problematic because smooth and light pollen grains are produced by plants, those that does wind pollination. Usually insect pollination requires such kind of uh, pollens, those that will be able to hook into the insect body. So number two is wrong. The point number three, the ovule where fertilization occurs when this male and female nuclei fuses. Okay. In ovule fertilization does occur. So one and three sounds correct. Which descriptions are correct for insect pollinated flowers? Okay. So one and three are correct. So B will be correct. All right. Moving to question number 30. What is a diploid nucleus? All right. A diploid nucleus is the one that contains one set of chromosome. Haploid nucleus contains one set of chromosome. So that is only apl applicable for haploid. So wrong. A nucleus containing two sets of chromosome. Yes, a diploid nucleus does contain two sets of chromosomes. So this is diploid. This is diploid. So B is the correct answer. Let's see why the other ones are wrong. A nucleus with one double helix of DNA. <laughs> nucleus with two genes. All right. Okay, guys, these two are obvious wrong. There is no question into it. Moving to the question number 31. Which statement about meiosis is correct? At the end of meiosis, zygote has been produced. Meiosis does not produce zygote. Fertilization produces zygote. During meiosis, the haploid number is halved in the daughter cells. During meiosis, the diploid number is half in the daughter cells. So that is wrong. Meiosis is reduction division in which diploid daughter cells are produced. Meiosis, is a, it says it's a reduction division, which is a correct statement. But that is not going to be able to produce diploid daughter cells. Part D, the parent cells contain twice as many chromosomes as each daughter cells. That is correct. Meiosis produces haploid daughter cells. 31D. The diagram shows the inheritance of height of P plants. We can see tall parent plants, TT, and dwarf plants, small is small. Tall offspring, tall offspring plant. Which plants have heterozygous genotype? So all the uh, offspring, the tall offspring plant have heterozygous uh, genotype. So both parents, no. Dwarf plants only, no. Both offspring plants, yes. Tall plants only, no. So C is the correct answer, guys. The graph shows the masses of two different types of tomato, type 1 and type 2. We can see there is a huge difference in between them. So this type 1 and this type 2 are of different varieties. What can be concluded from the graph? Genes do not affect the mass of the tomatoes. That is completely wrong. Genes does affect the mass of the tomatoes. Type 1 tomatoes shows continuous variation. This is correct. The type 1 shows continuous variation. The reason we can say is that it is producing a bell-shaped carve. All right, what can we conclude it from the graph? Okay, type 2 tomatoes are sometimes smaller than type 1 tomatoes. Type 2 tomatoes are always larger than type 1 tomatoes. So that is wrong. Type 2 tomatoes shows discontinuous variation. No, it shows continuous variation, so also wrong. So guys, 33B is the answer. Which adaptation may be present in a xerophyte? In a xerophyte lives with small surface area and large number of stomata. Xerophyte will not have large number of stomata. It wants to prevent water loss. Having more stomata means more water loss. Little or no xylem tissue and lives with large surface area. So little or no xylem tissue. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, it will never have leaves with large surface area. About the xylem tissue, we don't have to worry about it. Stomatal hairs and rolled leaves. Yes, this is a properties of uh, xerophyte plant. When the leaves are rolled, the surface area exposed to the wind and uh, to the elements actually decreases. Thereby, less water vapor is lost. And when the stomatal, when there is stomatal hair, it maintains a high concentration, a low concentration gradient between the outside 
you know air and the inside moisture so that allows less water vapor to be lost 34 c is the answer guys let's see why the last one is wrong thin or no cuticle and deep roots guys obviously it will have thick cuticle because xerophyte plant needs to prevent water loss the diagram shows a food chain in a rock pool seaweed well crab seagulls what will happen if the number of secondary consumers increases if wells whelks is the primary consumer if the secondary consumer increases seagull number will increase whelks number will decrease all right so there will be fewer crabs all right so few crabs are the secondary consumer so there will be fewer seagulls no there will be more seagulls there will be fewer whelks yes there will be less seaweed all right no there will be more seaweed so 35 c is the answer guys question number 36 what is defined as all the populations of different species in an ecosystem all the different population of different species in an ecosystem is referred to as community so that is the definition of community so a will be the answer guys question number 37 what is the role of anaerobic respiration in bread making in bread making we do not intend to produce alcohol to flavor the bread so that is wrong to produce gas to make the bread rice that is correct we want to make more and more co2 gas so the bread is fluffier and uh, you know in that way it is attractive to eat to release enough energy to break the bake the bread no we don't bake bread by making it you know do aid anaerobic respiration with yeast to release enough elastic acid lactic acid to kill the yeast no we don't intend to do that as well and uh yeast does not produce lactic acid it pro yeast produces alcohol so question number 37 b is the answer 38 a crop plant has been genetically modified to make it resistant to herbicides which is possible disadvantage introducing this new crop plant guys if we genetically modify a crop plant to herbicide in resistant to herbicide the crop plant later on will become the weed itself let's say if we make uh you know let's say if we make wheat resistant to herbicide and later on we plant in the same field soybean then the wheat will you know those remaining seeds of the wheat that are in the particular field they can grow and they will be resistant to herbicide as well because we will be applying the same herbicide in that uh, in a genetically resistant uh, soybean plant i hope you got the point so loss of weed reduces competition we want disadvantage this is an advantage some weeds might become resistant to the herbicide yes that can also be a possibility all right because of cross pollination they can become resistant to herbicide the crop plant is unharmed and produces a higher yield that is an advantage the new gene will appear in new generations of the crop all right uh, that can be that can be advantageous in some uh, perspective so we'll also leave that out so some weeds might become resistant to the herbicide by cross pollination question number 31 39 which is a reason for using bacteria in biotechnology <clears throat> we found bacteria inside human body no bacteria is mainly important in biotechnology because of the plasmid that they contain and they're simple organism manipulating them does not invoke any ethical concerns so bacteria do not become resistant to antibiotics they, they do become resistant to antibiotics bacteria can make complex molecules <clears throat> Bacteria can make complex molecules. This is a good thing because, you know, we see bacteria producing insulin, which is a pretty complex molecule. So bacteria reproduce slowly. No, bacteria reproduce really fast. So we do use bacteria in biotechnology because they can make very complex molecules which are needed by human. Question number 40. When a river is polluted by fertilizer, the following processes may occur. Increased aerobic respiration of decomposer, increased growth of producer, decreased oxygen concentration in the water guys we have to understand that first of all if it is polluted by fertilizer fertilizer will cause increased growth of producers so number two will be the first one all right and then that will lead to increased aerobic respiration by decomposer because when the nitrate runs out when the nitrate runs out those uh, producers are going to die and when those producers are going to die they are basically going to cause bacteria to work on them in decomposition which the bacteria will use up all the oxygen and thereby this will decrease the oxygen concentration in the water so it will be two one and then three c will be the correct answer guys guys thank you for joining this particular video we hope to see you in the next time in the next video if you like videos like this please subscribe to our channel let the channel grow at the time of recording this particular video we had a total of 265 subscribers
Okay, that's a lot for me. All right, thank you for all those those who have subscribed, and also thank you to the ones those that have watched this particular video up until this particular end. Guys, support the channel by subscribing to the channel. Watch more videos. Hope that helps you. And if you have any question paper in mind that you want me to solve next, all right, uh, post it in the comments. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. See you in the next video. Bye bye.